Hi, my name is Nick Ortiz, and today I will be unboxing the Yamaha YDS-150 digital saxophone. So a little bit about myself before I start the video. My name is Nick Ortiz. I am a saxophone student at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, doing my master's in saxophone performance, and I'm originally from the Chicago area in Illinois. So let's just get to the unboxing. I've already opened it so you don't have to watch a few minutes of and so that's why the box is already a bit open. So packing on this box, excellent. The <laughs> Dude, this thing was taped shut. They really wanted to keep it safe. So let's get the cardboard out of the way. So in the box we have a bunch of cardboard, the original instrument in the case. I'm going to put that down very gently. And then the instruction manual, which has its own little read. Take a look at that. <laughs> so I'm going to pop open the instruction manual first. Thing is pretty thick. I've had a look at it online. They sent me the digital version of this, and this is also in all of the languages, so good on you, Yamaha. I'm going to set these off on my music stand on the side so we can actually use it later. Um, this is a plastic piece with three O rings, which we'll talk about later, and it comes with a singular synthetic reed specifically designed for the YDS. It's hard to see. Okay, so now we're on the body of the instrument. Okay, so let's take a look at the case. It's a very nice, comfy case. So we have a single, slightly adjustable strap with a little hook so you can hang it. And then it also seals with these two buckles, as you can see, one, two buckles. Let's pop the buckles open, see what's going on here. So, so on top of the buckles, we also have a zippered secure pouch, so that's nice. Double the security. Ooh, here it is. Here. Oh, yes. Here it is. Let's get it out of the... is the YDS in all of its glory. So I think we've covered this. Let me set this case down. So we're going to talk about the instrument really quick. So uh, basically there's a mouthpiece with the reed already on it and a stock ligature from Yamaha, which is cool. Then we have a hard plastic synthetic body and then <laughs> the brass bell of a soprano saxophone, sadly no engravings. <laughs> so just taking a general look at the saxophone, it's, it feels very light, very, very light. And just from touching the keys, they're almost effortless. And they really do remind me of playing a soprano sax, which is really nice, because sometimes that kind of a feel on other uh, MIDI controllers and things like that. It's just a little bit more of a learning curve, so I like that this already has those keys figured out. So on the back of this we have an upper and lower octave key buttons. The lower one is for when you switch to Barry Sax sounds, you can simulate a low A, which is really sweet. And we have a battery pack on the back because this uses batteries or USB power. Taking a look at the top here. We have a small window with the power button, volume up, volume down options, voice up, voice down options, and a function key alongside the octave button area. And then to take this one step further, I'm going to remove the mouthpiece, which there is no...
cork, which is really nice. It's just kind of a, seems like a synthetic roller of sorts. Um, and so this is what the wind receiving end looks like. It's just a little tube. I'm trying to look down in there. There are two small sensors, which is really awesome. No mess. I believe the second hole is for drainage. There is a, yes, inside the bell, there's a drainage port. It's very hard to see. I'll post a picture earlier. Put this back together and I'm going to hop over and get it powered up. So I've shifted my seating a bit so I have a better, you have a better view of the instrument and a better view of me because I was wearing dark colors and a dark background. So uh, I have plugged in the instrument using USB power because I don't want to waste batteries and this instrument does not come with its own USB powering cable so you need to make sure you have one if you want to power it with USB or get your own or you need to just use batteries, just heads up. So I'm going to power it on. So I'm going to push the power button above. Little red light comes on. And in the little window, we have a zero one. I don't know if it's visible anymore. It actually turned off, but the red light stays on. So I also have my own neck strap. The case does come with the neck strap, the stock neck strap. I'll be using my Jazz Lab. But um, here is the Quanti S150. So I just played a little C major scale, two octaves, and I was happily surprised. This instrument, even on the alto presets, goes down to a low A. So that's already something really cool is if you want to play an alto piece that has a low A. I know there's not a lot of them, but there's a couple. Or if you want to do a transcription that might require a low A on alto, you can do that now, <laughs> which that's, that's honestly really cool. The one thing I do have to say, the, the feel of the keys is amazing. The pearls, um, I normally play on a Selmer. Pearls are a little higher than, I, than a Selmer, but I think these are pretty standard for Yamaha instruments. I used to play on the Yamaha. And that it all feels good, even the, the uh, X key, high, high F, front F key. That feels good. The low end feels good. Um, they don't have rollers, but honestly, the way the plastic feels, you don't need rollers for them. The only thing I'm not the biggest fan of is the octave key mechanism because you just have to really push it. So that's the only thing, but no no real complaints on the, the ergonomics of the horn. And I think when you heard me playing, there was a couple blips when I tried to cross the octave. So it's going to take some time to adjust to the sensitivity of now actually pushing my thumb a lot harder than what you would do for a normal saxophone. But overall, I really like the way it's playing. Uh, the sound I'm using right now is the stock alto saxophone sound, alto 1A.01. This instrument has about 75 sounds and about 50 to 60 of them are from the saxophone family. So I'm going to play through some of the alto sound variations and I'm going to do a few videos doing this just to explore what's possible on this instrument. So let's get to the alto sounds. Starting with the first sound, which is the one that I started on, this is A.01, which is the pop setting. So when it when it sustains for a little bit, there's a, bunch, a bit of a vibrato added and there's no variability to the vibrato on this instrument. It's just wah, 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 kind of a thing. I, I like it. It, does, it sounds fine. Uh, I wouldn't use this for classical playing, but I think if you're playing the right kind of solo, it would work. So I'll play a little bit more and then I'll shift to the next sound.
Yeah, and it's got really nice control on the, the air response to the dynamics. I really like that. I, I have more of a, a direct control than if I was using a reed, so that's interesting. As you can hear, I'm still getting a little bit used to the octave mechanism, but that, that'll come with <laughs> unboxing a brand new instrument. So I'm going to shift over to the second voice, and there is a list that is comes in the manual. I'll put a screenshot from somewhere around here. And the list is descending from A.01, the pop sound, but on the voice console, which is just above the octave key next to the volume on the instrument, you actually have to press up to descend. So right now, I've just pressed up once, and I am on A.02, which this is just straight sound. So yeah, I, I like this sound. It's it's a little bit more um, just just honest across. There's no vibrato, so you can use this however you want. Uh, nothing really too different other than the lack of vibrato. So I'm gonna shift over to A.03, and I'm on A.03 now, which is the jazzy sound. I'm also gonna crank the volume just a little bit louder. Uh, I'm I'm at 13 is the default. I've set it to 15, just a bit louder. Yeah, so this one is just a little bit more of a of a rounded vibrato, I think, compared to the pop style, whereas the, the pop was very angular, so this gets a little bit more rounded in the jazzy sound. Um, I kind of like it. So the next sound, A.04, is ballad. I don't know how different this is going to be from jazzy. <laughs> That's a little bit more sultry in the sound to, to me at least there's a little bit more lower end it's not as as bright um and the vibrato is a little bit wider here than jazzy so that's kind of cool i like that yeah the um the key pressure i'm also gonna have to play around with because sometimes if you listen i had my fingers down and it was playing a c sharp Also gonna have to get over some of my alternate fingerings because I use some of those by default and I would have to program this so that'll be another adventure we'll go on so we've gone through a.01 through 4 I'm going to skip down to classical because I am a classical saxophonist and I will showcase the rest of these another time but let's just go through a.07's sound which I'm interested to see <laughs> So the classical sound, I think they've captured it very well, um, at least setting it aside from the other versions. I heard a lot of that high spinning vibrato and it was creating that resonance that, that lots of classical, classical saxophonists really want to go for. So I think this is a pretty accurate representation of both the jazz and 
classical sounds. <laughs> and now we're going to kind of get into one of the cooler parts of this instrument is we're going to go into the instrumental effects. So I am shifting up to A.14. So A, A, A.14 or A.14, which, whichever you want, alto 14. This is called the distortion effect. And so I believe it puts the pop sound back on. Let's, let's see. So yeah, it put the pop sound back on the alto. So we have that little bit of vibrato, but um, th this is the fun part about this MIDI controller is right next to the right hand octave key, it'll be a bit hard to see. I'll bring it in close. You can see this guy right here. And this is a little, it's like, it's like your little game controller on uh, your Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, or Xbox One, if you're into that. Um, but so this is easily reachable by your right hand, and it lets you do effects. So this is the first effect I'm trying, and I've, I've never really done effects on a mini controller before, so let's see how this goes. So I'm just going to play around on it. So it just kind of so the distortion is just pitch bend. Um, it's only about a half step range, maybe a little bit more. But that's interesting, and I, I like it. That's a good one. And we'll do one more distortion effect, or just one more effect. We have overdrive, flanger, and phaser. I'm going to go with flanger because that sounds interesting. So here is a a sixteen flanger effect. <laughs> I didn't know that if, if you all remember that these little tubes I had when I was a kid and they had a little uh, membrane of sorts in them and they were really hard to see but the tube had two air slots and you would rotate the tube like back and forth and as it got close, if you had or holding the tube and it got closer to the bottom, it would make a wow sound. And that's the sound that they're emulating here. So I find that really funny and uh, nostalgic. So that, that could be a fun thing. Yeah, so that's fun. So it has the up and down controls on that one too. You can it's basically doing the rotation for you. So that's really cool. That's another cool effect. Overall, I'm gonna say I really like this horn. I think it will take some some getting used to. I'm gonna play around with the key adjustments. I also wonder how the articulation responds because the articulation is so much harder. I wasn't articulating a lot the whole time, but I realized sometimes when I was, it just wasn't coming across. And like if you listen here. <laughs> So that is an adjustment, so I'll definitely have to do some articulation work on this if I want to get a working sound out of it, but I think it's really, really cool that, that this is coming to saxophone players, because it gets rid of the guesswork of trying to set up new MIDI keys for the basic range of the saxophone, and it gives us the low A range, which that'll be fun to mess around with. Uh, but overall, I think this is a great innovation by Yamaha, and uh, if you can get your hands on one, these are coming to the U.S., they're pretty much back-ordered everywhere, but if you can get your hands on one, I would definitely put an order in now. This is definitely a really neat tool for saxophonists to explore other sound possibilities without completely leaving the comfort of what they know on their instrument. Uh, I'll be doing a series of videos just exploring the possibilities of this, so stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.